Hello friends, this is Julie, and welcome back to a new episode. In today's adventure, we are going to build out a beautiful, charming focal wall for my little girl's bedroom. For this focal wall, I have chosen two projects, a vintage peg rail and some faux brick. So I hope you're excited. Don't forget to stay all the way until the end to see the beautiful transformation of this really builder grade bedroom. That is one reason why I never recommend these lever lock measuring tapes. They simply do not work after a little bit of use. So today I'm gonna to be working on the peg rail that I plan to put along this entire wall. I went and bought all of the wood that I need the other day. It was about $70 worth of wood for all of the trim and the peg board or peg, peg rail all the way across this wall. And that's actually really not bad. So now it's just, oh my Lord. Now it's just coming down to processing all of it outside. And of course it's been raining everywhere, like nonstop. But while it's not raining, I'm gonna try to get as much of it processed as I possibly can. And yeah, I also purchased 70 pegs because I'm thinking every two inches might be my spacing. And so if it's almost 140 inches, that means I'm gonna have to do, let's see, I did the math and I think it was like 40 pegs. So let's see. So 139 and a half divided by two equals 70, but I have to add in the spacing for away from the wall because I don't want to peg directly on the corners. So if I wanted to do them every two inches, then we're looking at 68 pegs. Maybe if I did them every three inches, that would be about 45 pegs. So I am, I got 70 pegs, but I'm not sure that I need 70 pegs on the wall. Okay. This is just a six-year-old and three-year-old, but I do want to make sure that the spacing looks like not sparse. So we shall see. 45 might be the magic number and then I'll have to figure out how to evenly space them. So that will be fun. All right, so my dimensions are 139 and a half. So of course it couldn't just be a straight 140. That would be too easy. I'm actually gonna go and work on that right now. I'm gonna process the rest of the trim wood later. I'm not doing that right now. It's like nine o'clock in the morning. I haven't eaten anything. I've been uh, not being so great about that. So let's get to work. I literally can't fit the wood through the hallway because it's like almost 12 feet long. So I'm gonna have to bring it in through the window. <sighs> All right, I need to make sure that it fits before I do any more work to it, so. Here's hoping my measurements were correct. That's well, lovely, I'm gonna have to do some touch-ups on the wall now. But yeah, it fits enough that by the time it's sanded, it will fit perfectly. Now I just have to go outside and sand it, and then I can bring it in here and stain it. Stain both of the pieces. Well, I will sand, oh, I got a splinter. I'll sand them and then stain one and then do the pegs for the other one. Here's my bags of pegs, shaker pegs. These are three and a half inches. And I got two bags of 35. So, I'm excited. Let's get this done. This is when a workbench would come in really handy. The reason why I'm not putting it on this edge 
all the way is because typically speaking stain will kind of get in the way of the wood glue working and this is where I want to connect the shelf. So I'm actually thinking of using Craig screws like a, a Craig jig to connect them before I put it up on the wall just for my kids like to hang on everything so I just want to make sure that it's going to be really up there and I'm not just going to attach it with some nails to the top of it when I'm done. Maybe a few pocket holes and, and pocket screws along the edge of it and connect it before I get it in that room probably would be a smart idea. I really need more than one cord. I send all of my boards, beginning with an 80 grit sandpaper, and then when I'm done with that, I switch it to 120 until it's nice and smooth, and most of the flaws have been taken out. Choosing the spacing for the Craig jig, I basically did six inches. I cannot possibly tighten this thing any more than it is. This particular Craig jig tool has not ever been the greatest. I, I probably should have just sent it back and gotten a new one. To create the holes for each of the pegs, I used a spade drill bit that was 5 8 which is the same size as the pegs themselves. And I drilled all the way through, and then when I was installing them, I only put glue on the part that was going in, and then I made sure to clean off the glue really well, because stain will not stick where wood glue has been. So you really want to clean off that glue super thoroughly. Got them all in. Bee. It's not a bee. It's a bumblebee. It's not a bumblebee. It's not a bee. What is it? It's a fly. Ah. It's okay. The stripes aren't gonna hurt you either. Uh, where did my thingy go? My can opener is missing. My can opener has disappeared. It is starting to sprinkle, so I am going to get a move on this. I really just need to coat all of these things in stain and then I'm gonna bring it in the house and I will do the top coat another day. Let's see if this fits. Hopefully I can get it up there without doing any additional damage to the walls. Um, I will need to get my stud finders and my and my level to make sure that this is being installed perfectly level. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. did a mark for about 60 inches off the ground and this will be the top of the shelf. I took my long level and made sure that the line was straight all the way across and level because you can't trust your floor and you really can't trust your ceiling. So you have to have something else to make sure that, that the line is very um, actually straight. So I also marked all of my studs so that it is clear where to put my nails in to install the shelf itself. So the shelf is outside and uh, I put a top coat of polycrylic. I paid way too much money for the aerosol version. $15 guys for convenience, but it took, it, it saved, like it shaved off a lot of time of this project. So I guess I'll just suck it up. <laughs> and be grateful that I have the ability. Otherwise, I would have had to probably use wipe-on poly, and I mean, it does dry quickly, but man, is it a pain. 
to use on all of those. All of those pegs would have taken forever. And so it's a save, a time saver, basically. So it's out there, it's probably already dry, so I can bring it in here as soon as I'm ready and install it and get moving on to the next part of this wall. And then I can also start processing all of the trim. Oh, and another thing I got in the mail is all of their new covers, their switch covers and their plate covers. I got all of them in the mail, so that can be done as well. So exciting, moving forward. When I was installing this, I really just had to get the first nail into a stud, and then from there I could adjust it and insert more nails. I love it, pretty much. I think one should go in every room now. <laughs> All right, so there it is. Beautiful peg rail. And honestly, let me just tell you what the cost was. I'll break it down. I used one bag of the wooden pegs I got off of Amazon, and I will leave a link for them below. That was $14 or 14 and some change. So about $15. The two pieces of wood were $12 and 50 cents a piece. So that's 25, 35, $40. And then I used stain, which I already had. And I did purchase top coat. Although I could have used top coat that I already had. I just didn't want to. So if you have top coat lying around, even if you had furniture wax, you could avoid that cost, which was $15. So you could very easily get a beautiful peg rail in any of your rooms, as long as they're about 12 feet, because that's about 12 feet right now. This is a one by six by 12, both of those. And so you could easily have one for about $40 depending on what supplies you have on hand, it could even be less than that. I did have pegs left over from another project, but I wanted them all to match for this. So I did go ahead and add the 35 pegs. And you could even do different spacing if you wanted them farther apart, which would be less money. So basically, just a really gorgeous addition to a wall adds so much charm and function to the space. Now they have plenty of place that they can hang toys, I can hang a laundry basket or bag on the back there, be hidden behind the door. They can hang pictures off of it and then get little hanging things where they can just, or even like pant hangers, where they could literally just hang their artwork like that. Or if they are getting out their dress up clothes, they can hang their dresses up there when they change in between them. It's just very functional for any space that you have. It doesn't matter what room or purpose, lots of function. For a really little amount of money, it was a fair amount of effort, I'm not gonna lie, especially for one person. It was, it was frustrating, there were obscenities. <laughs> but you try to hold two 12 foot boards by yourself and pocket hold them, like without a workbench. That was frustrating to say the least, but I got it done, pulled up my big girl undies and I got it done. And yeah, I love it. My daughter loves it. Both my daughters are gonna love it. They're gonna enjoy using it. So basically what's coming next is the wall treatment. So today we are going to build on this beautiful vintage inspired peg rail that I just installed. And right now I am getting ready to do the bottom half of this wall, which I am calling my focal wall because it's, it's the wall that's getting the most attention basically. What I have decided to do down there is something that I did in my entryway. And if you haven't seen that video of where I took a completely builder grade entryway and put all the charm into it, I will go ahead and leave that video up here and down in the notes section for you. You can watch that when you're done here. I am going to be doing a faux brick using painter's tape, a little piece of cardboard, and some drywall mud. I have a lot left over from my entryway, so I really didn't have to purchase anything but some new tape. This tape you can get off of Amazon. You cannot get it in store, at least not where I am. So I will link it below. It is the thinnest tape that you can find. It's almost three quarters of an inch because this will determine the spacing between the bricks, the fake bricks. And you do not want the spacing to be too big. Otherwise it will just look really unreal. So that's basically all you need. I needed a trowel 
So I just have this like $4.50 trowel, my tape, my little cardboard cutout, which is a standard United States brick size, seven and five eighths and three and five eighths. And I cut it out, I have some cardboard that I have laying around and I'm just gonna get to work laying out my pattern here. It's going to be a basic brick pattern and it's really, really simple. It doesn't matter, you don't have to measure anything. We'll just go right along. Basically what I do is I start a line and then the next one will be starting from the opposite direction. And I'll just go that way. Start from the left for one, then start from the right, then start from the left, then start from the right. And we'll just go in that direct, that way, alternating directions so that the bricks are always alternating on top of each other for that brick pattern. It's the simplest way to do it. It's how I also install shiplap. So for a very natural <laughs> flow of it, basically. So we're gonna get straight into it. <laughs> All right, so to start, I am basically going to make my straight lines first. So I'm gonna start with tape and I'm gonna make a straight line and I'm just gonna go like that and then we will do the individual lines as well. So I just kind of, that's my strategy <laughs> for the moment. Pretty much that's what I figured out works best for here. So I'm just gonna get myself some music on because I don't wanna be sitting here doing this. By the way, what kind of music do you guys listen to when you're doing projects? I would be super interested to find out. Um, one of my favorite things to listen to is actually Imagine Dragons, Mercury Act 2. So I listen to that a lot. I'm not worried about precision because this is not a precision thing. This is a natural, organic type of project. So it's okay if, it, if the lines are not perfectly straight. I'm not going to go to the extent of making sure that these lines are perfectly straight. Even though brick probably would have been old world brick, you know, it sags and stuff with time. And so aged things are not perfectly straight. Therefore, I'm going for is not going to be perfectly straight. What I'm going for is an aged look, something that is old. We don't have to worry about perfection here. No, we're just going to do the best that we can do and it's going to turn out beautiful. So do not pressure yourself or feel like you have to get this perfect. You don't. It's an art thing. Just be an artist, be creative. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna do the individual slots starting in this direction and Let's just get to it because the quicker I get this done, the quicker I can do the other thing and then the quicker I can finish it. And I will be super excited to have this whole wall done. I don't even know that you know. So let's get into it. <laughs> actually, I'm gonna move you so you can actually see. I was allowed to do this without unplugging myself. Okay, Woo. there you have it. That was about an hour's worth of work. Holy moly. I got to the of four throw and I was like, uh, no. <laughs> I'm not going back and forth again. So I sat my booty down and I just started working on one section at a time and boy did that help my knees and my back. So if you have to do that, once you get the pattern established, it's pretty much the same thing. You just wanna make sure to try to um, get your brick in the center. So just kind of center it 
as best you can and then work that way. And that's how it does it. It evens itself out in the end. It's gonna be fine, you won't notice it. Especially because I'm gonna be painting it white. So you really will not notice it at all once it's on there and stuff. Now comes the fun part and my eight year old son wants to help. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let my back rest for a second, but it won't feel like anything but a second. Like, it won't feel but an instant for you. But I'm gonna go let my back rest because now my back hurts from leaning over a wall, especially because I'm putting it all the way to the floor. So that was fun. <sighs> okay, I'll be back. Show me how to do this. All right, grab that and then you need to put it morning it is fully dry and so now I go to the next step of the process which is actually to take a sanding pad and sand down all of the rough edges I'm doing this with like a headache apparently there are some there's some severe barometric pressure going on in this area and uh, it is affecting me and my sleep so that's fun but we're gonna push through it and we're gonna get this done so let's just start. And hopefully it won't take very long. dusty okay now I'm gonna clean up real quick probably should have worn some kind of a dust mask honestly and I might have said that the last time I did this because it just got real dusty real quickly
All right, I've got a couple of couple of helpers. Close the door, please. So this is gonna be interesting. and I'm just going to put some saran wrap over my brush and my roller and in my roller tray so that it doesn't get hard in between coats because this first coat is gonna dry rather quickly while we're outside we're actually gonna cut all of the trim wood for in here or process as much as we possibly can while this is drying and then I hope to come back in for the second coat tonight one of the reasons why, and some people might question me why in the world I did white on the bottom half, was because the rest of the room is rather dark. And so I didn't want to do all dark walls. There needed something that light could bounce off of. And so having a larger portion of this one wall where the light is coming in from the window to bounce off of this gives them a lot more light in this room since there's only one small window and then this tiny little light fixture up here. I hope to do more lighting in the room upcoming, but as you know, with each light that you add to a room, it also adds to the, to the heat. Anything that you can do, like I plan on adding maybe some mirrors to the wall as well to try to reflect some light in that way also. But yeah, so that's what I chose to do with a light color on the bottom, even though this is more farmhouse than it is dark academia. Because this is a child's room and it's smaller, and I just don't want them to be literally just all dark in here. I chose to go with something light on the bottom and I really like it. And now for the reveal. I really hope that you enjoyed this entire process as much as I did watching a very builder grade bedroom that was just a very plain box turn into this beautiful vintage wall. It has so much charm and character, but not just the beauty of it. It has amazing function as well for my little girls. And honestly, it would work really well in pretty much every room of the house. This was such a budget-friendly project. Since I already had most of the supplies on hand, this really cost me less than $50 for this entire wall. And obviously, parts of it were easy enough for a child to do. I have some really fun projects coming up for this bedroom, including the closet, which I'm gonna be completely ripping out and building from scratch. Make sure to come back and join me again. Thanks again, guys. See you later.